Hello, I'm Barbara Haskell, one of the curators of the Whitney Museum's Georgia O'Keeffe Abstraction Show. Hi, I'm Sasha Nicholas, another one of the curators of the Georgia O'Keeffe Abstraction Show. Georgia O'Keeffe is most known as a painter of things, of flowers, of bones, of New Mexico landscapes, and yet throughout her career, abstraction was the underpinning of everything that she did. She began her career as an abstractionist, and she ended her career as an abstractionist. And throughout the long decades in which she painted, abstraction was the, the underpinnings of the way she looked at the world and the way she expressed it in paint. She turned to abstraction as a way to portray what she called the unknown, those ineffable, intense feelings that we all have that are inexpressible in words. Through paint and form, she felt she could convey those feelings, tap into them in a way that would trigger those same feelings in viewers. In 1915, when O'Keeffe did her first uh, charcoal, she leaped into abstraction with a group of works which is so radical, given the, that year, what other people were doing. And in that very short six-month period, she created essentially a vocabulary for herself, a series of motifs that she would return to throughout her life. She spoke about them as being shapes that she had in her head that she would return to again and again over the course of her career. Starting out, O'Keefe often wrote to friends and acquaintances about how she felt words were inadequate at, for her as a medium of expressing her emotions. She said that form and color were her most precise language for expressing her most intimate feelings. Words and I, she said, are not good friends at all. O'Keefe met Paul Strand, the photographer, in 1917 and described to a friend being head over heels about him and about his photographs. And when she returned to Canyon, Texas, where she was teaching, she did a series of portraits of him. And as she said, at one point she has done many portraits throughout her life and they've gone into the world as abstractions. In this case, she actually labels them and calls them Portrait of Paul Strand. And I think in looking at them, you can feel the heat and the energy that these two young artists felt for each other at that one moment. They're just filled with a kind of bursting fire and, uh, as I say, heat. I think O'Keeffe uses form in a way that's analogous to how poets use language, for example, in the Evening Star series. And in each one, it's slightly different in the same way that a poet will, will craft words, will repeat things again and again, but even just the sound of, of saying something or a slightly different word choice changes meaning, so does O'Keeffe's use of uh, slightly different colors, the f of shifting forms. She makes us look anew at, at the same image each time she renders it. O'Keeffe turned to oil in 1918, and uh, what she did in that work is so radically different from what other artists were doing. Even other modernist colleagues of hers would look at a subject and extract the essentials from it. And O'Keeffe, in this, in this early period, express, in expressing these intense feelings, this feeling of being enveloped by an experience, being so overwhelmed by something that the mind is put at rest, at bay, and, and one's emotional uh, being is fully consumed by the thing itself, the thing in front of you. And O'Keeffe describes that experience in a very unique kind of space. Instead of creating space that's flat or space that's shallow or space that goes into depth, she creates space that's fluid, that moves in and out, so that she's not only replicating the rhythms of nature, by doing that she envelops the viewer in those rhythms so that the viewer is him or herself thrust into the center of her pictures and feels the rhythms and the, the, that fluid space enveloping them, enveloping us. Jack in the Pulpit is, is O'Keeffe's great case study in abstraction, that throughout her career she would often take a subject that was recognizable and abstract from it and abstract from it again. And in the Jack in the Pulpit, she does it over a series of pictures, so that she begins with a fairly recognizable image of the Jack in the Pulpit. And as she continues through the series, it becomes more and more abstract, until the final image is a hook shape, very similar to some of the hook motifs that she introduces in her charcoal. And as she said in one of her maxims, that there's uh, nothing less real than realism. It's by elimination and simplification that we get to the real meaning of things. So that through the course of these five pictures of the Jack in the Pulpit, she has in fact gotten to the real meaning of Jack in the Pulpit. O'Keeffe did a series of paintings called Sky Above Clouds. We have several works from this series in the show. 
O'Keefe began to travel after Alfred Stieglitz, her husband, died in, in 1946, and to have that first view of, out of an airplane window as, a, you know, a 60-something-year-old adult, to me, I always imagine it must have been incredible. It's this great inversion. We're always used to seeing the clouds above us, and to suddenly have them become this soft carpet beneath you. For O'Keefe, it obviously, the experience, that vision, inspired her to, uh, to paint it again and again.